Good day, everyone, and welcome back to, well, sort of a Derail Valley episode. Uh, today, we are actually going to be taking a look at modding in Derail Valley. And so, I know, uh, well, let's just say uh, there was some questions about how to do modding, and needless to say, I discovered something rather interesting. So originally, uh, I was trying to help uh, Jim uh, out there with uh, answering some questions about Zybox couplers, and um, Schutt Rostig uh, pointed out that, uh, well, specifically said it's not American style, it's Russian couplers, and so I was going to explain how you edit it in the config file there by going to beep in x um, config com dot github blah 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 blah, you know. There's a config file for that. But in the process, I noticed something. Uh, so originally, we were using beep in it. Well, OK, quick little history lesson here on Derail Valley, and then we can get into how you actually uh, modify Derail Valley. So before um, we were using beep in X, Derail Valley used the Unity Mod Manager. And with the simulator update, so this is before, you know, before the simulator update, Derail Valley used the Unity Mod Manager. Then when the simulator update was coming out, uh, it was pretty much said, yeah, we're going to be using BeepNX. All right. Um, now, this is where things get interesting, because as it so happens, as it turns out, um, when I went to uh, <laughs> when I went to explain all of this, um, I ended up noticing after I originally posted this, I noticed something's kind of off here. Specifically, I then found out that with Zybox coupler mod being in 1.2 uh, and up, uh, yeah, we're back to Unity Mod Manager. And so I said, okay, I'm doing a video on this. I'm going to explain what the heck's going on. And this is that video. So if you were expecting me to be driving the train, well, wait a little bit because there's going to be another video coming out and that's going to be, you know, your regular Derail Valley video, which was canceled on Wednesday because, well, quite frankly, Wednesday, I was Wednesday. I was completely unavailable. I was in the middle of moving Thursday, uh, still unpacking and very busy and flat out absolutely exhausted after going up some stairs. We're not getting into that. Uh, but yeah, so that's why you didn't get a video on Wednesday or Thursday. I apologize for that, but physically I could not do it. Uh, so I do apologize for the inconvenience on that. But let's get back to this uh, tutorial here. So the first question you should be asking yourselves when it comes to modding in Derail Valley is where am I going to get mods from? And the best place to get mods for Derail Valley is Nexus Mods, all right? So if you aren't familiar with Nexus mods, um, bear in mind, I'm going to try and do this a little bit here, entry level, brand new player to the game here, because, um, you know, for you, for the seasoned uh, players of this game, you've probably already figured out modding for the game. Uh, it's really the new players that this kind of focuses on. But if you're having problems with anything here, this may help you. So uh, I'm going to take this from an entry level here. So uh, Nexus mods is one of the bigger mod hosting and I, I really don't know how quite to describe it but this is you know this is the nexus of mods that's why it's nexus mods um you know this is where you can find a lot of mods for a lot of different games and this is the main place that you can find mods for derail valley there's some other places but this is your better bet this is where all this is where all the good stuff is, such as Zybox Couplers mod. And that's what this video is going to kind of focus on here is we're going to kind of focus on how do you get Zybox um, Couplers mod working. So um, the first thing you're going to need to do, though, is you're going to need to get the Unity Mod Manager because, well, we're back to the Unity Mod Manager. Um, and there, I think a lot of this has to do more so with, you know, just this overall desire to get back to what we were using. It was a more familiar environment. I don't know if uh, the Derail Valley team said, yeah, we're going back to Unity Mod Manager, or if the community basically said, no, we're using Unity Mod Manager. Either way, all the mods are starting to work their way back to Unity Mod Manager. Uh, I didn't do any mods for Derail Valley, but basically what the Unity Mod Manager is, is it's 
both a mod manager and then all right so DRL Valley is written uh, using the Unity engine um, and in order to it doesn't have any built in modding support in it so you have to get uh, a separate thing here that will basically inject the mods into the game and so that's what the Unity mod manager does it enables the mods to actually the game to actually see the mods and consider the mods part of the game but also it is going to act as an organizer and it's it's pretty decent it's very simple um personally i like the unity mod manager for managing the mods in drl valley better than vortex so you do not need there's no vortex this is just a manual download so what you want to do and links are going to be in the description for this i should have said that from the beginning all links that i discuss here are going to be in the description so uh but specifically this is nexusmods.com slash site slash mods slash 21. So that the fact that it's a low number there tells you a lot. So yeah, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and download the latest version, uh, which was, um, yeah, I think this version, yeah, this one was vo up vo uploaded on the 24th of July uh, and I downloaded it on the 25th. <laughs> so I've got all this stuff already downloaded, so I'm not going to be downloading anything here, but you're going to want to get the Unity Mod Manager first. Okay, so once you get the Unity Mod Manager downloaded, it's going to be as a zip folder here. So you're going to have a zip folder. You're going to want to open the zip folder and you're going to see this folder. It's Unity Mod Manager Installer. Um, basically, if you look in this folder, you're going to see some files. I recommend you just take this folder here. Um, the Unity Mod Manager installer, drag it to somewhere and have it be somewhere that's you're willing to go to to manage your mods and stuff. Uh, personally, I just put in a programs file, um, you know, program files like 86 here because it is a program. And uh, basically, when uh, it's when you extract all these files over to there, uh, you're going to have this Unity Mod Manager exe. And this is what we're going to be using here. This is the mod manager itself. So one thing I recommend, though, before you actually run the Unity Mod Manager is you go and you download the mods you're going to be using and you download them all to a uh, specific folder there. So uh, specifically, uh, you can uh, I recommend you go and you get uh, Zybox Couplers Mod. That's the one that this is going to focus on because there's a little bit of an extra step here. So go ahead and, you know, just download uh, the latest one there. Do a manual download and save it somewhere important. Another great one by Zybok is the booklet organizer mod. Uh, that's the one that's going to organize the booklets on the table there so it makes it a little bit neater. They're not just haphazardly scattered and stuff. And so that's a big help having that one. Another fun one by Zybok is the remote dispatch one. And we'll get a little bit into that later. Uh, but what it does is it allows you to uh, interact with the game, kind of makes it a little bit multiplayer. You can use this as a multiplayer experience, but it allows you to open up uh, a web browser and navigate to um, specifically, we'll get into that where you go for this, but um, this allows you in your web browser to control the switches. It allows you to see over here, you have all the different train uh, jobs here. Okay, so FFFH14. All right, and it's going to tell you all the cars that are part of it. It tells you where it's, what track it's on, and what track it's going to. So this helps you know a lot about what you're working with as far as the job in advance. But it also helps you identify where stuff is, and you can plan your route from in a web browser. Now the game has to be running. Uh, when this happens, the other thing you can do is you can have someone else act as a dispatcher. And uh, so they're going to be controlling the switches for you. And so you don't ever get out of the cab. It's like, OK, dispatch. Uh, am I clear for the main line? And so they'll say, yeah, you are clear for the main line. And so then you can go. So it, it, you can do a little bit of multiplayer with that if someone wants to be a dispatcher. Uh, the last mod it, that I'm going to recommend is uh, the skin manager. Um, there's another mod that I would also recommend, but it's currently not available because they're working on it. They're fixing it. They're trying to make it work properly. Um, and basically, that's the custom car loader mod. The skin manager allows you to take the existing uh, vehicle, well, the existing locomotives and cars in the game and change the skin on them. So this is all a DE2, but look at how many different skins it has on it here. Uh, so you can do that for different cars. 
Um, custom car loader allows you to actually load custom cars in the game. And it's going to be a while, I think, before that's back up to where it should be. They, you can't actually even access it as the, the time of this recording. So those are the mods we're going to be uh, going to be working with here. So with all of the mods you're going to be working with uh, download and stuff, um, let's talk about you know the Unity Mod Manager. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on unitymodmanager.exe and it's going to pop up here. Now I've already got it installed, so yours won't have this uninstall. It will say install. What you need to do though is you need to go to the game section. You need to select from the list of games Derail Valley. And when you do so, it should hopefully automatically locate the installation in your Steam folder. If not, you can manually select where your Steam install, where your game installation is uh, right here. So just click this, it will open up a window and you can navigate to where you need to go. Once you have the location set there for this, you're going to hit install. Now I don't need to install because it's already installed, so we can move on to the next step here. So mods. As you can see, I've already got uh, three of the mods that we're going to be working with installed here. But um, the one we're particularly focusing on is Zybox Coupler mod here. So there are two ways that I can install Zybox Coupler mod. I can click here and it will open up a window and I can browse to it. Or I can take Zybox Coupler's mod from where I downloaded it and just drop it here and it will add it into the Unity Mod Manager. Now specifically, you'll see this folder here. It's Derail Valley. This is in the Unity Mod Manager. And you'll see that now we have this Z Couplers uh, folder here. And this is where all of your mod stuff is saved. You do not need to keep these zip folders once you're done with it. You can clear these out. But do not. these files are important. This is why it's important that you save this into a place that you're not going to accidentally delete it because you're going to need this to update and run your mods and stuff. Well, to install your mods. The other neat thing here is, as you can see, Skin Manager actually has an update. So what I can do is I can tell it to update right from here, and boom, it's updated. It's all good to go. Um, for you, it will probably take a little bit of time to update it, but yeah, I've already. it's all good to go. The Skin Manager is now up to date. Another thing you can do is you can actually... Um, so, for example, if I don't want to use the booklet organizer, I can hit uninstall and see how the status went away. Likewise, I can click on these and I can hit install and they're active again. So think of it less as installing and uninstalling and more as enabling and disabling the mod in the game. But there's another there's more to it than that with that. So we are actually done with the Unity mod manager here. Uh, so we can actually hit exit out of that. Everything is set up except for in the game. Now we got to boot up our game. If you've successfully installed the mod manager and your mods, you will see them all here. And it will give you some information. It will tell you the mod name. Uh, we'll get to this over here in a moment. It will tell you the version of the mod. It will tell you any requirements that have been defined. It will also allow you to turn the mod on or off. So you don't need to enable it or, well, you don't need to necessarily uninstall install. But uh, I will say you might not want to do it through the mod manager here. The other thing it will tell you is the status. So, for example, if I disable uh, remote dispatch, it's a safe one to do this with. If I disable remote dispatch, it's now gone gray, which means it's in inactive. If you sometimes when you change stuff with the mods, it will require you to restart the game. So. How do you get the US style couplers, the AAR couplers with Zybox couplers? Well, over here we have two things. One is a link to the web page, and the other is your options. All right, so this is where we are going to go and con configure it. So by default, Zybox couplers use the SA free knuckle um, or CA free, if you know, for if in Russian it's CA free. Um, the SA free is the Soviet auto coupler free. All right. We want what you want to do is you want to click on this for coupler type and you're want to, going to want to hit AAR knuckle. And so now this is the US style knuckle coupler. Um, you also have the option to disable or actually I should say enable the buffers with knuckles. So you can also, if you want to use the uh, buffer and chain, you can select that. As you can see, that option goes away. But if you select the AAR or the uh, SA free, 
then you have the option to keep the buffers or to hide the buffers. By default, the buffers should be hidden when you have either AAR knuckles or SA free knuckles enabled. The other options that you see here, these are more advanced and you probably do not need to mess with them. Uh, these are fine by default. I don't recommend messing with these unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, and they're, these are pretty much the optimal values by default. These are kind of needing change. These only need changed for special usage cases. It's just a nice thing that we have to uh, be able to mess with it. Additionally, if you're having problems, you can enable logging and stuff, um, which is you know useful. So that's uh, pretty much it right there for uh, the couplers. If we say hit save there, um, now this is the interesting thing in the way here. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with uh, the mod manager is if we go over to settings here, my mod manager window looks a little bit different probably than what you were presented with. And I probably should have talked about this first, but um, what I had to do, because I use 4K, so I record these videos in 4K, my game's running in 4K, I had to up the window size and the scale. So these are optimal settings here for 4K, at least if you want it to look like how I've got it. Um... Likewise, you can decide whether you want the mod manager window to show up when you start the game or not. I like having it pop up because then I know everything's running correctly. Um, likewise, you can have it check for uh, updates or never check for updates. Um, I don't think it really matters personally for me. Also, if you want to bring up this window in game, you can use Control and F10 and you can bring this game uh, as this window up. So if I hit close, OK, window's gone. All right. If I hit Control F10. Windows back. So I this is a good way to bring it up and you can bring it up in game. So it's useful if you're tweaking certain settings with stuff. Um, likewise, you have access to logs. And if you don't want to use the hotkey here, you know, of control F10, you could set your own custom one. I'm fine with control F10. That works in this game. It's not a problem. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So I'm going to, you know, I, I tweaked my couplers there. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of this. Uh, I don't want to do that one. I'm going to select a different session here. Uh, one that, uh, there we go. This is why I've been kind of using to experiment with some things here. So we're going to select this one here and I'm gonna, just going to load this up here. And we're going to take a look at what happens. Okay, so now that the game's loaded, the first thing we're going to notice here is that, yes, the booklets are organized. So the booklet organizer mod is working. That's nice. Now let's run across the street here without looking both ways and being very irresponsible. And if we get up here, oh, look, it's the Soviet couplers still. So here's the thing with this, and this is very important, all right? I would like to point out the buffers are gone and we've got the uh, the SA free or CA free uh, couplers there. So clearly the mod is working, but why don't we have the AAR? Didn't we hit, you know, if we go into control F10 here, uh, didn't we go into Zybox coupler mod and set it to AAR? Yeah, it's set there. So why isn't it working? Well, uh, even though it doesn't say it, you will need to reboot the game to get your couplers. The good news is, you don't need to worry about anything here. Um, all the couplers will properly update when the game loads with the restart. So I'm going to restart my game uh, and then we can see if it's working or not. Okay, so I have reloaded the game here. And if we look, look at that. We've got AAR couplers. So again, the important thing there is make sure you reload the game after after you save that setting. You don't actually have to load the world, um, but you won't get the coupler change unless you reload the game, you know, restart the game once you uh, set change that with the coupler mod. So the other mod that I'm going to talk about really briefly here that Zybok did, which is uh, pretty cool, is the uh, Dispatcher mod. So let's pull it up here. Um, so if we go to the remote dispatch, hang on, I should hit escape. All right, now let me do it. There. I recommend you hit escape when you're in game there so that you can mess with things and also it pauses the game. So if we go over to remote dispatch, we have the option of setting what port it is. You need to know what this port is. By default, I believe it is 7245. Um, so remember this number here. You can set a password, which I recommend if 
you are going to be doing uh, anything online connections. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure that that is set. Um, so you'll need a password set if you're going to be port forwarding or, you know, to allow someone else to do this. But if it's on your local network, you don't need to worry about that. You just need to know that this is 7245. So let's pull this up in uh, the web browser. OK, so I have uh, the web browser here. I navigated to localhost 7245. Uh, I didn't set a password or anything, so I'm just going to hit sign in. It's going to load it up here. And OK, it's working. Great. Specifically, what we're going to see here is this little icon represents the player. Oh, look, we can see Locomotive uh, 75 there. Uh, we have well, 075. I can see Switch 144 here. And oh, well, why can't I interact with the Switch? You said you'd be able to throw the switches. OK, we got to hop back in game for a second here. OK. So what you have to do here is now that someone has activated a session there, see how it says name? It's because I left the name blank. But if I put in a username there, it would actually show my username. So you can have multiple people technically log in here, and then you can assign them different position, um, different permissions. So by default, my no username here was able to connect. And so I guess if you uncheck that, you technically kick them. Um, if I select that, they I now have access to the junctions, and I also have access to locomotive control. Wait, what? That's right. Um, so first of all, now when I click it, it flips the switch, and so you can align the route here uh, for where you're going and stuff. But if we go over to uh, here, we can actually select from this list uh, the different engines. So for example, 75, and I could uh, adjust what's going on there. I could tell it to couple or uncouple and I can specifically once when it's coupled I can determine where you know it does uh, things with the coupling there. Uh, I have control over the reverser, the independent brake, the train brake, the throttle. I don't recommend using this personally. I've had some hmm, iffy experiences with trying to do this but it is an option so someone could remotely drive a train in the game uh, if you know they wanted to um but over here is the really fun thing there this is where you have all the different orders and jobs so if i have a job say uh i had lh60 as a job and i gotta locate lh60 um i could type in lh oh there it is it shows me all the cars it shows me where what track it's on so it's on uh smb7s which is of course Sawmill B7S, which is right here. And so it also shows me what licenses I need. So I need train length two license in order to be able to do it. It also is gonna tell me how much I will make off of it. So that's an $18,000 job there. It tells me the tonnage of the train. It tells me how long the train is. It gives you some good information. It helps you locate cars. So even if someone else isn't going to be doing this, this can help save you some time here because it can help you figure out where stuff is and you can align your route for which whatever way you're going. All right, so if you heard that, um, that was actually the switch aligning because I messed with switches in it. So that right, you know, there is proof that it works. I just hit escape to, you know, resume the game. It will, if, if the game is paused like this, it will not actually apply any changes, but the second the game unpauses, it will apply those changes. So I had messed with this switch and that switch has now changed. Technically I changed it and then I changed it back. But uh, so the point is that you heard the switch there. It does actually change the switches. So I hope this video was helpful uh, for those of you who are struggling specifically with Zybox uh, coupler mod, but I hope I also introduced you to some other uh, really cool and fun mods that you can use to expand your D-Rail Valley experience. So um, if you have any questions or uh, concerns, uh, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you. I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not going to be turning this into a common thing where I do a bunch of tutorials, but I, I will try and help you out, especially if you hit that sub button, you know, wink, wink, hint, hint. But uh, yes, thank you for watching. Once again, I hope this helped you.